Studying reactive programming? Listen, I wanna give you a way of thinking about observables and operators that's going to help you contextualize every definition that you encounter. Now there's a lot to talk about, so I'm going to break this down into two parts. The first part is all about observables and RxJS in general. The second part is all about operators. This is the second part. If you're interested in the first part, you can check that out here. I'm also going to put a link in the description. Okay, quick review. I used this metaphor to explain the tools of RxJS. In this metaphor, people are listening to the radio station to hear the weather report. They represent the observers. Question, which part of the picture represents the observable? Well, if you watched the video, you probably said the weather, and you're not wrong. However, there is a catch. The people aren't listening to the weather, they're listening to the radio. The radio is also an observable. The sound coming out of the radio is a function of the radio announcer. What the radio announcer says is a function of the weather report sent to him by the meteorologist. What the meteorologist writes is a function of the data coming from the weather station and interpreted through her experience and expertise as a meteorologist. The data presented by the weather station is a function of all of the instruments attached to it, and the instruments are a function of the weather itself. Instruments weather station, meteorologist, radio announcer, radio. There are at least five observables involved in this entire process. And we're going to use these characters to better understand the vocabulary of observables. So let's start with this. There are two ways that I could describe observables. The source observable and the output observable. Now, which is the source and which is the output? It depends on my scope. At this scope, the weather is the source and the radio is the output observable. If this is my scope, the instruments are the source observable and the written report from the meteorologist is the output observable. The reason it matters is because everything in between represents the pipe function. Now, if you've been working with RxJS at all so far, you've probably already encountered the pipe function. The pipe function is what takes the source observable, performs operations on it to provide an output observable and all of those operations happen inside. The operations all deal with observables themselves. That's why this is a picture of operators. Let's go a little deeper and look at some more vocabulary. When an observable does something, we'll say it emits a value. If the meteorologist sends a new weather update, we'll say she emits a value. Presumably, as soon as the meteorologist sends a new update, the radio announcer will follow suit and emit a new announcement. These emissions will follow one after the other, but that isn't always the case. The meteorologist reads a weather station, but like I said earlier, she interprets the data from the weather station through her own experience. The smallest change in a single instrument might not be enough to warrant a new weather update. Rather, the meteorologist will only emit a new update if she determines that the data is sufficient to require an update. Now let's talk about that weather station. The weather station is equipped with multiple instruments, a barometer, a wind gauge, a wind vane, a rain gauge, a thermometer, and even more. So the weather station is an observable of observables. We call this a higher order observable, whereas the individual instruments are all first order observables. The first order observables that make up the higher order observables are also considered inner observables. So three words there, higher order, first order, and inner observables. Now, the instruments on the weather station, they are not themselves weather, they are evidence of the weather. When the wind gauge says that the wind is 11 mile per hour wind, the job of the wind gauge is to project actual wind into a reading. It's a project function. We've got source observable, output observable, emit, higher order observable, first order observable, inner observable, and project function. So in this chain of events, we take one thing, which is the weather, and it ultimately gets converted to sound coming from a radio. These changes take place over a series of steps or operations done to the original source observable. These operations then are operators. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to interpret each of these changes as a certain type of operator straight out of the documentation from RxJS. We'll start with the instruments. If the instruments were an operator, they would be a map, because a map applies a given project function to each value emitted by the source observable and emits the resulting values as an observable. The weather station would be the combined latest operator because it combines multiple observables to create an observable 
whose values are calculated from the latest values of each of its input observables. The meteorologist would be the with latest from operator. And the reason for this is a little trickier, but remember how I said the meteorologist interprets the data through her expertise? In this case, the meteorologist uses the data from the weather station as a source observable and then combines it with her latest understanding or theory about how to interpret that data. So again, I would say that's comparable to the with latest from. Check it out. Combine the source observable with other observables to create an observable whose values are calculated from the latest values of each, but only when the source emits. The radio announcer. Now I haven't said much about the radio announcer yet because the radio announcer is really the most basic. The radio announcer just reads the report, but which operator he represents really depends on his behavior under certain conditions. For example, let's suppose the radio announcer is reading one report and while reading another report comes in. What should he do? If he stops reading the first report and then begins to read the new report as soon as it arrives, then he's doing a switch map because a switch map projects each source value to an observable, which is merged in the output observable, emitting values only from the most recently projected observable. If the radio announcer doesn't begin a new report until the first one is finished, we have concat map. They're very similar, but listen for the difference. Concat map projects each source value to an observable, which is merged in the output observable in a serialized fashion, waiting for each one to complete before merging the next. If a new report comes in while the announcer is still reading and his response is to somehow read both at the same time, then we have a merge map because merge map projects each source value to an observable which is merged in the output observable. See, merge map is a more basic version of switch map and concat map, whereas switch map starts the new one as soon as it comes in and concat map only switches after the first one is finished. Merge map doesn't do anything. It's, as long as another one comes in, it gets read too. They both go at the same time. If the radio announcer reads the latest weather report every hour on the hour, then he must also be observing another source, like a clock. The announcer represents throttle, since throttle emits a value from the source observable, then ignores subsequent source values for a duration determined by another observable, then repeats this process. Okay, let's suppose the radio announcer works for a national radio station, and any time a weather report comes in for any city at all in the entire country, he just reads the latest report. In other words, the radio announcer is an observable of observables, since the latest report for each city is an observable, and he's observing the reports for all the cities. So if he's reading all the reports from all the cities as they come in, he represents merge all. Merge all converts a higher order observable into a first order observable, which concurrently delivers all values that are emitted in the inner observables. What I've done is define eight operators simply by reading the words straight off the page. For me, the metaphor really helps, but there are about 100 RxJS operators. I'm not going to make a metaphor for every single one of them, so what I've tried to do is just get those that touch on the vocabulary that I found is most commonly used. Anyway, I hope that's helpful. Whenever you see a video that says simply explained in the thumbnail, you'll know that's one of those videos where I explain something using stories. That's the way I like to do explain videos. I try not to get too much into the nitty gritty of the code because I think there are a lot of coding videos out there and I wanna do something that's a little different. If you like that style of explanation, if you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up. I know that you hear creators on YouTube say that all the time, but what it does for me is it lets me see what my audience enjoys so I know what to make more of. My name is Ben, I'm an entrepreneur and I make videos about innovation. I make videos every week and I also respond to my comments. So subscribe if you'd like to see more and if you do, I think I'll see you next week. Thanks, bye.